keep the queefs coming. Josh Potter Show. You've got to learn to be able to put the ball in your hands. Your hands are what makes it possible. Q-U-E-E-F. Murder. Sex murder. Yeah. Your hands are, are, are tender and they can move and caress the ball. <laughs> that's that's kind of that's gay, but hey, close. Jay Crates with a remix, a wonderful remix. Thank you very much. Josh Potter Show at gmail.com is where you can send all of yours in. You can send your roach reportings in as well. It is the Josh Potter Show. Thank you for joining us once again to all my fine little roaches out there. And with me today, a very special guest. <clears throat> he's a regular at the Comedy Store, and he's one of uh, the, the nicest guys I have come across in Los Angeles. He's welcomed me with open arms, and uh, I appreciate him a great deal. It's Frank Castillo, everybody. Hey, thank you for having me on, man. I'm very excited. I'm glad you're here, and uh, you're an interesting, for those who don't know, you know, the door guy legacy at the comedy store is something that comedy fans are aware of, but you are like one of the the top ones, you know, the top stories. You went from door guy to television like immediately. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Tell people if they don't know this entire story. Oh. How you fall into the folklore? I mean, this is like people like Marin, people like uh, I mean, even Kennison was a door guy, right? At mm -hmm. some point, it's crazy. The legacy is insane. Tell us about your notch in the uh, legacy. Yeah, uh, I was a door guy uh, for about six years, and then I got on TV for roast battle uh, when I was like three or four years into being a door guy. So I actually got uh, on TV for the first time while currently being a door guy. So like. I like worked the door as I was on TV, and I think Willie Hunter said uh, I was the. Um, he was like, "You're probably the most famous door guy to be a door guy, like, and get on TV." And I'm like, "That's <laughs> fucking cool." Because I also was wearing the shirt too, right? I, I wanted to make like a statement that it was like, I was, I was, you know, I was just the guy still working the door. And then uh, after that, I just started getting to open up for everybody because uh, everyone kind of. I, it's this like thing of like when you get to see someone like do well in a situation like that, people are like, "Oh, I'm gonna help him and take you on the road and stuff." Sure. So I got to be, I got to get a lot better at stand up after that, and uh, I think that's what I focused on the most after uh, roast battle. Was it weird doing sets without the shirt on for a while? Like, I mean, because you would wear it every time. Like, yeah, you have to because yeah. you're at work. Absolutely. And then, uh, but some people would take the shirt off before they went on stage because they were just like, I don't want people to see me. But I was like, no, nah, fuck that. People need to remember that shit. Yeah. I want people to watch me take the trash out and clean up vomit. So then when it's like moments of dope awesomeness, they can be like, yeah, I saw that guy fucking take the trash out. God, that's what's crazy. Because, yeah, you're on television and then it's like, hey, we still need you to you know, take the trash to the dumpster yeah, and or whatever the case may be. It's so funny because that's also such the case now for so many other current door guys. Like Luke Schwartz was on Comedy Central's um, The Ringers with Bill Burr. And there was, I think there's a few other com uh, comics, same thing uh, going on. Uh, I think like, well, well, not anymore, but Asan, when he was a door guy, he was on the Showtime doc and he got shown around because mm. of that. He had like a solid joke. And now he's moving on to bigger, bigger things. But yeah, the... Legacy of Door Guys is, uh, yeah, it's like a fraternity. There's a lot of good comics that are uh, in it, that have come from it, and that are uh, being developed now. It's wild because even, I mean, like, a lot of the guys now are, like, awesome comics, too. Yeah. And it just it keeps coming. It's weird how, like, I'm sure there's been duds along the way. Of oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. For every Brian Simpson, there is a Jared Levin. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who that is. Yeah. But neither do you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love Jared Levin. He's a great dude. Uh, like, yeah, there's, uh, I mean, I don't know what the batting percentage is, but it's like, it looks like it's pretty good, though, actually. Well, you know I, what I mean? And I also think it's, um, you know, especially going through the system, it's not just, people always think that it's just getting the job and that's like, I got the job and now my life's going to change. And it's like, nah, man, you still have to do the work. Yeah. So, you know, when you're a door guy on that caliber, like, man, I was also a door guy at the same time as like, the two or three years before that, when I, I mean, I was there, I was a door guy for six years. So you also got to understand that it's like that's six years of like having to compete and also get better alongside the strongest fucking comics. You know what I mean? Like, sure. I got passed with Laura Bites, Tim Dillon, and uh, fucking uh, Mrs. Pat. <laughs> oh, yeah, Miss Pat, dude. Oh, dude, my God. it was insane. Um, and then before that, the door guys I got passed were like Jerron Horton, uh, fucking uh, Ron Taylor, all these, all these like killers. Mm -hmm. So, like, even when you become a door guy, it's still like they're cutting your teeth 
teeth of doing as many spots as you can, going on the road with whoever you can or whoever like catches your set in the OR and then is like, I want to fucking invest time in you yeah. and shit like that. So it's uh, it's still a lot of work even when you get the job. Yeah, it's very much like, um, like I mean, as a person, as an outsider who started, you know, in a smaller city and, and just did the road or whatever to try and like cut my teeth. I look at this as like it's like uh, accelerated learning, yeah, you know, because you are alongside, like you said, you're like, I have to go up after, you know, a Joey Diaz or something, yeah. you know, on occasion. And it's like uh, Jedi school, you know, when the younglings are in the thing with the. Yeah, yeah, before Anakin Skywalker kills them yeah, all. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, it's like door guys are like the younglings. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, and it definitely feels like that way because it definitely is like it feels like school and like college if you right. make the most of it. Because there's some people who show up and they're like, I don't fucking understand it. You're like, what do you want? I thought things were going to be different. It's like, well, you still got to like, you know, do the stand up constantly right. And then also like a lot of it is like not networking, but like be interesting and being like uh, fun. Being a hang. decent being, hang. Yeah, yeah, yeah a decent yeah, yeah. hang. That's like the biggest thing is then you're like, oh shit. Okay. Yeah. it's You got to be a fun hang. I'd imagine you're accelerated in learning that at the comedy store too because on the road and I mean I watch people in my own scene and people like as I've risen up like as a middle and now I'm headlining like seeing how the hangs are on the road it's such a slower learning process for oh, people because yeah. they're awful hangs sometimes yeah, or man. they don't know like how to be in a green room and it's just like then you're calling your friend on the phone you're like oh I got one this week that's you know oh, what yeah, I'm saying talking bad shit yeah, yeah, yeah exactly so it's like I feel like that learning is accelerated at the comedy store too because you learn pretty immediately like ah this is like uh, how yeah, to be a good hang yeah. or not you know what I mean it's so like strange. I walked in the green room and the openers getting a blowjob in the bathroom <laughs> I wish it was something that cool <laughs> yeah no it's usually like he was smoking weed before the show oh he just started. had all these questions <laughs> oh my god <laughs> about not important things by the way yeah. <laughs> just like I gotta do my set dude like, <laughs> or they're like sleeping on the couch you're like oh I don't want to sit on a couch in my own green room that's <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> like I'm sleeping in a booth in the back, dog. I'm taking up a server space. My favorite thing is when you're doing a show and like people are coming to see you. That's like awesome, obviously. But then the MC will come back and be like, they're a little tight. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, all right, man, we'll see. Uh, that's so funny. <laughs> but yeah, that's just like, uh, but at the comedy store, like I said, it's uh, probably like, someone learns a lesson really quick yeah. in terms of like if they're being annoying or whatever. Yeah, man. Uh, dude, one of my favorite ones was uh, I got to see, and he's a funny comic and I, I love him and I wish he got a job at the store, but it just didn't work out. Uh, so like uh, it was with Adam. He was the old talent coordinator and um, he, this comic had gone up on Pollock a few times. He was kind of, kind of new Adam, but you could tell he like it, he was on the patio and Adam was on the patio like looking at his phone and you could tell he was just trying his best to like find like he was like oh this is my moment to like talk to Adam like I'm gonna like it. so like he walks over and he's like hey Adam uh you, you know I've uh if there's ever a door guy position that opens up I'd really be interested in becoming a door guy and like auditioning I've done pot look a few times you know my name's blah blah and Adam looks up and he goes ah no and just walked away <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> all of us, all of our friends that knew him saw it happen and immediately Ooh. turned down and we were like, ooh. ooh. <laughs> Man, comics ain't shit, dog. They are not, they are not your friend. <laughs> Dude, it is, uh, I mean, yeah, it's just a wild uh, scene over there, you know, and I'm, uh, I just like coming. I'm happy you guys allow me to come around, drink beer, and hang out, and do sets once in a while. And uh, well, yeah, you're also one of the more chiller people to come and hang around. And you're also like, it's different. I think when you come in and you're like already kind of you have your own thing, mm -hmm. and then you come in and it's like you get to just be a comic. You're not like a young comic. Uh, you're not young. Uh, no, no, you're not, no, you're no, you're not like an open micer and then trying to like cut their teeth and come in. No, but you also don't want to come in and be like, I, I do stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know yeah, what yeah. I mean. So I mean, I I try to uh, hold the place with reverence, and I I just yeah. uh, come when I'm invited. Yeah, and, and you respect it too, and I think yes. people see that and they respect that. I hope so. Yeah. But you had to. I'm sorry, you put you had your phone in your oh, hand shit, for like yeah, the longest time, and I forgot to be like, yeah, plug your gig. Oh yeah, 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 yeah I forgot. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be in Houston, Texas, September 16th and the 17th. I'm doing the riot. Uh, comedy show. I'm very excited. And then I'm going to be in North Carolina opening for Polly Shore the 7th through the 17th. Oh, I uh, I was with um, Jesse Je yeah, yeah, Jesse last yeah. night. I, I don't know what to... I call her Jesse. 
Am I not? Is she jet ski or is she? It's Jesse jet, jet ski Johnson. I like calling her jet ski because it's fun. Yeah, no, I know it's fun, but I'm like, I always feel bad. Like if she's like, no, that's I don't really. It's just, just Jesse. It's fine. I don't. She hasn't like corrected me. Yeah, she's anything. got colored glasses and yeah. plays a trombone. I don't think she's <laughs> tripping too hard. She's the, the funny best. Though. She's like she's so fucking funny. She's so positive and just oh, absolute light. Yeah, I loved I loved uh, watching her perform last. She's night. so great. Yeah, but that'll be fun. That'll be a fun uh, yeah, yeah, gig yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. So go check out Frank and. Uh, when he opens for Paulie in North Carolina and in Houston. Those are both in September? Yes. Wow. So September. Oh, no, no. That's uh, next one. So what? July? July 7th through the oh, 17th. Oh, July. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know what the hell month we're in any longer either. Well, today's Father's Day. So happy Father's Day, Dad. Yeah. Happy Father's Day to my father as well. He watches the show now, I found Oh, out. does he? That's so Yeah, great. he figured out how to pull it up on YouTube. Which is, uh, I go, don't do that. Just stop. One like, of my he's favorite. like, I do it because I miss you. Like, <laughs> They're so like that, dude. My dad subscribed to my Patreon once. <laughs> you don't want to hear what I have to say on here. It's not the best. I want to start a podcast with my father. <sighs> I couldn't do it. Sorry, dad. I would love to. And I would love to invite other comics and their dads to come on. Because my dad's like a dad's dad. Where he's like. You know, he's got dad jokes, he drinks, he's fun. He sure, can, like, I he love my dad. Out. He's a fun hang. He's a great convo, but I just, I wouldn't be, I mean, sometimes I get, I don't know what it is. I'm like that with my mom. Yes. I'm like that with my mom, too. I'm like that with both of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can talk to my dad about, like, normal stuff, though, and my mom, I I feel like we are on different planets when yeah. we talk. My sometimes. mom still wants me to be a hairdresser. That's funny. <laughs> you don't even have hair anymore. Yeah. She was like, you meet a lot of women. I'm like, I'm married. <laughs> yeah. That's true, too. Like, does your mom not want you to be married? <laughs> no, she does. She loves my wife. But she's, oh, okay. She's, I don't know. My, she still wants you to meet women? I don't know, man. My, I'm convinced my mom's like, uh, she's got like hardcore uh, undiagnosed ADHD because she's always just like, I got a plan. Let's do this. She's always got like a new hustle. And I'm just like, wow. dog, what is up? I got to meet your mom at the back of the you comedy did. store, which is so <laughs> wild. <You> did. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, I could lady. never imagine my mom coming to the back of the comedy store. Oh, bro. My, that's where my mom thrives. That's I, it's wild. I could never imagine my. I mean, people are smoking weed, people are drinking, s talking about wild shit. My yeah, mom yeah, yeah. would. I can. I could not even. It would make my brain melt. Well, I remember uh, there was a comic that was uh, talking about fighting. It was a female. She was talking about getting in a fist fight. And, like it was Kim Coggins. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, they were just talking about getting in like a fist fight. And I just remember my mom just kind of just being like, uh, "Oh, that's nothing." She started telling stories from her youth, and I was like, "Oh yeah, my mom used to get down when she was like that's why eighteen, nineteen. She used to get fucking crazy before she had me." Yeah, sure. My mom, uh, her senior trip, they all got to go to Hawaii. My mom uh, stayed. <laughs> And just, just lived stayed there. there. And just lit. Just <laughs> they didn't like, make her come home. Well, like what the kind guy, of school is she, that? She met like a guy, and then like he like kidnapped her because she was so attractive, and like she was just chilling with this dude. And then uh, the state police ended up having to come and like get her. <laughs> oh my and like God. my mom and like her dad had to come. It was a whole thing. And uh, yeah. My mom was so hot, she got kidnapped. That's wild. Yeah, she, yeah. And not even for sex trafficking purposes. Mm -mm. She's so hot that this guy wanted to keep her. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. like, I'm trying to wipe this bitch. Yeah, yeah. I'm not putting her in a barrel. <laughs> I'm this one's for me. <laughs> this one's mine. Yeah, yeah. I asked my mom, I was like, I was like, Are you, did that not scare you? She's like, no, it was terrifying and stuff. I wasn't too scared, but like, you know, it's a big confidence booster. That's I was wild. Like, what the fuck? That is wild. Yeah, she's a crazy lady. I uh I mean my mom does not have I don't believe stories. Do your like mom that. do you think do you, you ever think your mom uh like do you think your mom's the type of lady who would like sneak in, has like a I snuck in backstage or like my favorite concert and blew the singer kind of deal? I think uh she was like I smoked cigarettes in the bathroom of school. I wore like a leather jacket. She used to date like a guy uh that like had a motorcycle I want to say, but that's like the extent. I don't even think my mom liked bands. I my I found out my aunt was in my aunt liked motorcycles and then my uncle was in like I'm I'm not positive he was in a biker gang but he rode with a lot of people and he was he had like we he had his leathers and shit yeah or whatever that's called and then uh my aunt was really into the scene from what I understand because mm. my grandfather was a big alcoholic so she like rebelled I see and I remember we were going through her garage and I was like a teenager and she had all these like biker magazines she was like oh yeah these are crazy and then like she was showing like the pictures and they were like topless women she was like oh whoops and then that's wild I'm 
remember seeing a picture of her topless on the back of a Harley in like her twenties, and I was like, "What the fuck?" And she was like, "Ah, this is from the and like started like hiding. It was just in her. It was like amongst her pictures. It wasn't of like like old love. Like this. This is when I was like a younger person. It was like in a box of like shit. Here's your grandmother. Here's oh, it's a topless picture of there. I'm like, yo, what? She's getting railed by everyone from fucking (laughs) the Rolling Stones. I wish. I mean, my. I asked my mom, I'm like, what were your favorite bands growing up? She's like, I didn't really like bands. I liked songs. I'm like, that's insane to say. I don't know why. It just seems nuts to me. Yeah. I just like songs. I know she went to go see Elvis, but it was when he was fat. Oh, fat Elvis? Yeah. That's great. And I also just had this recollection because I'm high. I remember my mom talking about her boyfriend before my dad. She was like probably going to marry him. Mm-hmm. And he drove drunk once, and she like never again will I talk to you or whatever. Oh, well. and I think maybe he, maybe she was in the car or something. So like that's why they broke up. But that's what she told me. Yeah, because he drove drunk and he was driving crazy. My mom will occasionally, which is a good reason, I guess. My mom, my mom will occasionally be like, "Fucking, I can't remember what her name is. I think not Susan or some shit." But she'll it'll be like, occasionally be like, "Oh, you mean fucking what's her name?" And be like, "Fuck that bitch." I'm like. Who? And oh. then I'll ask my dad, and he was like, that was the girl I was dating like before your mom. My mom he was like, your, my mom really loved her, and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, shit. And it was like the the woman that was like before my mom. And then like my dad also makes fun of my mom because there's like a guy she really liked. That That's funny, too. And they'll like talk shit, and I'm like, bro, this was like 30, 33 years ago. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, now that we're getting older, do you think about like stuff like that where you go like, I'll definitely talk shit about that stuff. You know what oh, I mean? Like I um, talk about, there's a girlfriend I still like will bitch about to my friends and I'm they're like, we were, I was talking to my buddy the other day. I'm like, truth be told, haven't dated her in like 13 <laughs> years. I don't know why we're still talking about this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta apologize to some women. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, me and my wife talk about uh, people we dated before. You know what I mean? And it's very funny, too, because, like, uh, my ex still talks to me, and she's got kids and a husband, and we shoot the shit very cordial now. We weren't the nicest when we broke up just because we were just – she was dealing with a lot of stuff, and I was, like, an immature and wanted to do stand-up. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah, of course. There was a lot of, like, adult shit going on. Dude, yes, yeah, no, I know yeah, that. A hundred percent. And we're better now. And it's uh, – I don't – I'll crack jokes to my wife about her, but I'm never, like, mean because I do still want this person to have a happy life. She was a cool sure. person. She was – I look back and I think it was like she wasn't oh, the worst part of my life at that time. It was just young fucking dumb kids, you know? Right. Um, and I, it feels good to know that she feels the same way because she'll message me and shit and we still talk. My mom still talks to her occasionally because, you know, sure, she, we were very close. And then um, my wife hates her ex – who she mm. is convinced is uh, <laughs> is in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still or like, well, we both openly shit on him, <clears throat> and it's pretty fun. And it's uh, yeah, I don't know. It's Why does really does he uh, did he have some tendencies while they were well, dating? We um we were actually this is gonna sound so fucking nerdy. Uh, we were in a play together in uh, <laughs> in Temecula, and. Uh, I remember in high school or like this, this was, was like a, as this an was adult? after high school. Yeah, this, <laughs> it was almost worse. Was, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say like, <laughs> where'd you go do a play? Like, I was like 19. Anyways, uh, where no, though? I, like you go to like, oh, the, no, it was a winery. It was they did like uh, they plays a winery. I think I think I was like 20. Maybe I can't remember. I really got to fucking remember how old I was because it, it gets worse the older I get. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, fuck. There's going to be so many memes of me doing Shakespeare now. God damn <laughs> You're it. You're doing community <laughs> theater. <laughs> I didn't even know that was uh, a thing. <laughs> when community you're, theater. When you're in a small town, yes. Um, and, but he uh, was in the play as well. He was one of the co-what leads. It sounds the worst I talk about it now. <laughs> one of the co-leads. Yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> uh, he beat out, <laughs> beat out two guys for that. <laughs> no, I don't think he beat out anyone. <laughs> um, anyways, so he he was like, oh, yeah, my crazy ex-girlfriend's coming. And she came in. And it was funny because she showed up. And I was like, oh, I know who she is. Because um, two months prior, I had uh, I worked at this casino called uh, Pachanga. Yes. My wife was uh, the usher for their outdoor shows that they oh, were no doing, shit. right? And um, she was actually the usher for the section I was sitting in. So that's where we met. Mm. And so I'm sitting right here. Here's my seat. And she's standing right here. So the whole time, I'm just like hitting on her and just talking to her, right? And I was trying to get her number. And then I didn't get it because she got cut. So I just, she just like left. And I was like, right. oh, no. She was like, I was that like, sucks. I remember telling my friend, I was like, I'm going to marry this fucking woman. She was wow. gorgeous. And then um, 
I've said that, by the way, about seven girls. Yeah, me too. Yeah, she was the (laughs) 20. I go, that's the one right there. Yeah. (laughs) I've done that so many times, dude. I did that yesterday. I did that. (laughs) No. um, So we we end up meeting at this play three months later because he's like my crazy ex-girlfriend. And then I'm like, oh, I know her. She was like, I fucking, she's she's cool shit. And then uh, that's when I got her number and we hit it off. So that's why it's so funny because he was like, that lady's crazy. And then I was like, oh, her, she's pretty cool. And then we like, uh, she's crazy huh can i get her number though? yeah can i spend <laughs> the rest of my life with her <laughs> she's totally crazy dude we're going out on friday yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i mean it was so funny because she's like the best yeah you know and it you know it's he wanted to move to la and become an actor and all this stuff and then and now it's like he's i think he moved somewhere and is doing something and has like he's, he's like doing, God, he's a family man but he's not doing what he wanted he's to in do. bakersfield doing yeah. fiddler on the roof <laughs> at a fucking <laughs> <laughs> at a VFW. Oh, what's so funny to me is that he's probably just chilling, like being a regular dude, and then he's just getting shat on. <laughs> you do it in behind closed doors, you might as well bring it out to the oh, light. It's so that's funny. where it's the best. But let's uh, let's get into some news stories, shall we? Frank, a uh, Roach reporter out there, Justin M. This guy's coming for Roach Reporter of the Year this year. Oh, I mean, really? he sent in just stacks. He's been doing a lot of journalistic work out there. And uh, this one involves a wife. The CEO of Amazon Mexico. Have you heard this story? And wait, is it different than regular Amazon? I believe so. It says a former CEO of Amazon Mexico, probably just the division of Amazon. Okay. You know, Bezos is like the top guy, but then he's got CEOs in each country, probably. Yeah, yeah. Jefe Bezoso. His name is Juan <laughs> Carlos Garcia. <laughs> the most Mexican man. Yeah, right? It's like all three of the names are just like, it basically is like, if it was a white version, it'd be John Smith Clark. Yeah. You know, something <laughs> like that. But he was accused in court this week of paying the equivalent of around 9,000 American dollars to have his ex-wife killed in 2019. Now, if you had to have your wife killed, not your current one, the ex one, how much would you have to pay? Nine grand seems cheap for nine grand seems to like have a little, anyone killed. It yeah, seems cheap. listen, because at that point you're not paying for someone to get killed. You're also paying for someone to be quiet about killing someone, right? So you want to pay right. top dollar. Yeah, like I want to pay. I think killing someone and them getting away with it a yeah, clean upwards of two hundred thousand dollars is it like when you go and get dental work done in mexico you're like well it's just cheaper down there yeah yeah, yeah. Well, so you, hiring a sicario you're like nine grand is pretty good for and if you think about it if they if it's someone who's doing this already on the daily nine grand is like you know yeah like, that's the thing with the, when it comes to a sicario guy uh it's i believe i'm using that word right is it a verb it's a it's a title right of a person yeah yeah. okay so yeah if you hire because that's what it says here he paid uh two sicarios or hitmen that's yeah. what it says okay good i got Sicario it right means hitman. good i got it right to murder this woman uh evidently it comes out to 180,000 mexican pesos yeah yeah that's that's a good amount of money so, yeah, I mean, but I, I don't know. That's the other thing. Like, if it's a Sicario person, he doesn't fucking give a shit about secrecy. He's like, I killed six people this morning like yeah, before yeah. I woke up. So you get a little That's off the top coffee. there. After her murder, Garcia sent a letter addressed to Mexico City Mayor Claudia something or other. It, this um, The Mexican city, or Mexico City Mayor, her name is Claudia Scheinbaum. Sounds not Mexican to no. me. Sounds like she's the mayor of Israel or something. Yeah, she, she, uh, <laughs> as a father, I would have never wanted for my kids to go through something like this, which has affected them and changed our lives. Garcia wrote this is when he was uh, trying to plead his innocence here. After a judge demanded a psychological examination for Perez as part of the investigation into her allegations against Garcia, Perez flew from Nuevo Leon to a private hospital. So the woman didn't get murdered. That's good news. And then she's accusing her ex-husband of doing this. Mm. So that's where it gets. Now the, the it's funny because the judge is like, she's got to have a psychological evaluation. This fucking woman's claiming her husband tried to have her killed. Give her a psych. This isn't believe all women going on. Not here. in Mexico. <laughs> no, they're like, get her in the psych ward, yeah, for yeah. Christ's sake. 
Uh, but as it comes out here, January 2019, according to Perez's testimony in court, she was sleeping at their shared home when a blow to her head woke her up. She said she saw Garcia standing in front of her with a baseball bat in his hands. She then testified that she was cut with a sharp object in the cheek and that Garcia tried to strangle her before their son pushed Garcia away and Perez managed to escape through a window. Garcia was briefly incarcerated and freed after a judge decided that there was not enough evidence to show he wanted to kill her. <laughs> man, Mexico is wild. Yeah, like, yeah, man, this is a lead tap. No, he was just pissed at you, and yeah. uh, he wanted to, like, you know, make you dumb. <laughs> That's why he gave you a blow to the head. He's just trying to ruin your fucking intelligence. The judge reclassified the accusations as family violence. After Garcia left Mexico, eight people suspected of being connected to Perez's murder were arrested, including the men who allegedly pulled the trigger. Oh, so she did die. My bad. I really am confused. Uh, I mean, I thought for sure. I, I didn't realize that she this. So to suss it all out here for you. She was like, this guy is trying to kill me. And the judge is like, put her in a psych ward. This lady's nuts. And then he actually did try to murder her. And they're like, family violence, just run of the it's mill. misunderstanding. So then he hired the Sicarios for two uh, or for nine grand and uh, they shot her. The, gr- the government literally gave him three chances to kill her. Yeah, that's the thing. She was like, he is trying to kill me in multiple ways. And they're like, Psst, put her in a padded cell. <laughs> fucking idiot woman golly I have a button that says that. idiot woman <laughs> <laughs> that's what the judge said put her in a cell fucking yeah but thank you Justin M for that bad boy right there and he also sent in another one that I'm excited about because uh, it involves some hometown lore from back in my time in Buffalo and this guy his name is Carl Palladino and he's like a guy that he eventually, like, I think at one point he tried to run for mayor of Buffalo, and then he definitely tried to run for governor of New York uh, once he saw Trump become president. He was like, oh, I'm going to become president. And this guy, he loves being just, like, blatantly racist in the press, and he thinks, like, it's fine. He's like, I'm not, ra- but I'm not racist. I'm just uh, not PC. But then he'll be like, black people smell weird or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, he'll say something insane. Where, you're, where it's blatantly racist, and you're like, this guy definitely, if there's anybody who's a racist, <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he says wild shit about gay people, about black people, and he's all, he... all under the guise of, like, it's free speech. And you're like, okay, yeah, no one's, like, arresting you for saying this, but also, like, you're trying to be a developer, <laughs> you know, yeah. in the city and build up properties and stuff like that. When you're buying up, you know, inner city housing... We know what you're going to do with it, and it's not going to be nice. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So, I don't know. This you're guy- get the smelly people out of here. <laughs> yeah, we know guy. what your goals are. <laughs> and and recently, you know, he I think he's- Oh, now he's uh, running for Congress aye, 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 on the Republican aye. ticket. And uh, he was explaining uh, some inspirational leaders. Let's see. I mean, we have the tape here, and this is funny because it's on uh, WBEN, which is- a radio station where in the still program director hates my guts. Cause like, I don't know. I was like making fun. They're, they're complete like right wing wildness, you know? And they have like local versions of like Rush Limbaugh who are untethered, like unhinged people. Like I don't even care what side of the aisle they're on really, but they are like this guy, Tom Bowerly was claiming like the government's in my backyard listening to me and they have antennas and stuff. And then they just let this guy talk on the radio for four hours. And so I would make fun of him all the time. And eventually this, by the way, is a AM news radio station in Buffalo. They blocked me on Twitter and they provide like a f- utility. They're a news station. Like if I woke up and like there was an Amber alert or something, uh, you know, and obviously we get them on our phone or something, but if there was something going on and I needed to go to like WBEN Twitter to like see what's up, I wouldn't be able to (laughs) all because their program director hates my fucking guts from just like making fun of him all the time. And uh, Carl Palladino was a guy that they wanted to have as like eventually he'll be a pundit, you know, so they have him on the radio all of the time. And here he is uh, talking about. Uh, how inspirational <laughs> look at his eyes they're completely in two opposite oh, yeah, directions like, hey, uh, uh, he, I mean I used to see this guy there was a bar called the snooty fox this guy would be in there drinking martinis trying to slap asses <laughs> wild guy all right go ahead and play it Kirsten we've been talking a lot about politics here today this morning Carl and I know 
that that's obviously near and dear to your heart, and you've and you've, ta- you've taken you've taken real action, and a lot like you were saying earlier, many people uh, don't voice their opinion or or just become see it as as utter futility. How do you, how do you rouse the population? How do you get people thinking about the possibility of 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 change here in New York State, and and what that might mean for for our for everyone here? I was thinking the other day about uh, somebody had mentioned on the radio uh, Adolf Hitler and, and and how he aroused the crowds. I mean, he get up there screaming these epithets, and 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 these people were just they. Were, they were hypnotized by him. Uh, that's, I guess, I guess that's the kind of uh, uh, leader we need today. We need somebody inspirational. We need somebody that 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 is a doer, has been there and done it, so that it's not a strange new world to him. Oh my I God! Pause around. it. I can hear the host like falling out of his chair <laughs> behind there. He's like, Did he just. I hear something. There's commotion in the background, or he's like, Did you just say Hitler? Out of all the ins. He just goes, who's an inspiration to someone you as a leader? Who, someone who can shout epithets. Yeah, that was, the, that was the way he described him. Oh, he aroused a crowd by shouting epithets. We need more of that in our society. I, I agree with him, frankly. I mean, uh, we don't have enough people shouting epithets in the, in the streets at epithets. this point. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking... Why, then, you know, he was called out after saying these things, you know, about Hitler or whatever. They're like, what the fuck, dude? You... You're inspired by Hitler, and he was like, ah, "I guess I should have said Churchill." <laughs> but you want a guy like this for Congress? I mean, this Ugh. guy, yeah, wild to have him as your grandpa or your uncle or something. And he yeah. comes over, and he's just like, "Wait, till, like that's fun." Like if he was just my rich uncle Carl, and he would come to Thanksgiving and say racist shit, I'd be like, "I'd invite friends over." I'd be like, "You got to come listen." To yeah. My- yeah. My crazy uncle. He's going to talk about how cool Hitler is. Yeah, he was like, as the great Adolf Hitler used to say, follow through. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) This guy, though, is running for multiple elected positions and has a a lot of influence in what happens uh, as far as development in in Buffalo and stuff. So that's why I think he's just such a wild, wild man. Oh, man. Thank you, Justin M., for sending that. I don't even know that he knew I had such a... That's an SNL character, the fucking uncle that quotes Hitler all the time. Oh, sure. I mean, I think they actually did Carl Palladino on SNL. Today's Josh Potter show is brought to us by DoorDash. What do you want to eat tonight, huh? Maybe you want a home-cooked favorite, but you don't want to do the cooking. I've been there a bazillion times. Maybe you want to try something new and exciting, but you want to stay on your ass on your couch and watch the Stanley Cup Finals. Been there, too, very recently. Well, DoorDash has a solution for all those problems. I mean, they can connect you with restaurants that are, uh, you know, favorites around the country, some of the biggest chains around the country. And they can also connect you with uh, local favorites, restaurants that are just, you know, in your proximity. Maybe you don't even never even been there. You walk by it a bazillion times and you're like, oh, boy, I'd like to try that. It could help you out with that as well. It can also help you out with groceries convenience items. I mean, I'm still dealing with the surgery a little bit. I have to buy gauze and tape and stuff. I don't want to walk to Rite Aid to do that. I I call DoorDash and they bring the tape and gauze right to my bleeding wound. (laughs) It's pretty wonderful, as a matter of fact. And right now I want you to try DoorDash uh, with a little help from me. My listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more. When they download the DoorDash app and enter code Josh, that's 25% off up to $10 value and zero delivery fees on their first order when downloading the DoorDash app in the App Store and entering code Josh. Don't forget that's code Josh for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. Nevertheless, we will continue on now. Justin, I'm continuing with the fucking wild stories here a uk woman's sexual harassment claims against her co-worker have been dismissed after a particularly racy message was pinned on spell check so this woman in the uk i guess in the uk you can get like you can claim sexual harassment for texts i mean yeah okay that makes sense i mean it makes sense here too i guess but i didn't know that that was like a part of the law i didn't know you could like Get arrested, you know, or get That's sued. That's hilarious. Getting sued for shooting your shot and just fucking it up. Yeah, right. Like, could you do? Could that happen in a DM situation? Like, if you, I mean, obviously, if you send a dick pic, yeah, I yeah. feel like girls should be able to, uh, like, prosecute that for like some sort of uh, 
gift card yeah <laughs> yeah something i don't know you know <laughs> a dick pic uh is intrusive uh, yeah, yeah that's so intrusive an unsolicited dick pic is so intrusive but if you were like hey i think you're hot is that i think if if like if if, if a guy just wanted to be like listen i'm just gonna give it to you straight can i just you know eat your asshole blah blah blah, blah. you know what i mean at that point you're just like listen I'm suing them for fucking a hundred bucks for just fucking the gross ass shit. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. Could you sue for that for shooting your shot? Like you said, uh. I wonder what he wrote. So in this case though, her claim was thrown out because of, uh, of spell check was used as the defense. So I want to find out like what exactly was written here. Farah Farouk brought discrimination claims against Ben Fairbank, her former colleague. Oh, so it was like a, a work situation. Oh, even worse at network rail in Britain. Uh, so I guess they work on the railroad. <laughs> What's network rail, Kirsten? Let's look that up. Let's see if that is that a company or is that I've been working on the rail? Because if these are railroad employees, like, of yeah, course, yeah, yeah. like he's yeah, going to yeah. say some savage shit. Yeah, yeah. If they're railroad employees, he's definitely going to make some fucking terrible innuendo. What does it say there? Something about bridges and tunnels? Yeah. these. People... I mean, this is set up for a clearly a fucking, uh, <laughs> like, a, a fucking like, dude, <laughs> if this guy didn't write about <laughs> tunnels and trains <laughs> and... or railing, yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, like, yeah. The, the options are endless. <laughs> I was uh, just texting her about work stuff. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. At five o'clock, about to get railed in this tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she's working the rail all the live long day. <laughs> work this rail, lady. It's part of work. No, so so in one of the messages, Fairbank wrote, "Ready for your big penetration?" I would assume it was a. I, I would assume it's the train coming. Oh, the train is coming around. Uh, big penetration is the name of the five o'clock uh, <laughs> southbound. One minute later, not but sixty seconds, he texted, "OMG, I meant presentation." All right, let's type in. Okay, test it. I don't have spell check on my phone. Let's type or autocorrect, in. Autocorrect, excuse me. Let's. T I'm gonna type in. Are you ready for? I'm gonna send this to my wife. It could be also. I don't. Are you again? I don't have autocorrect on my phone, but does autocorrect? Because au I've heard people be like, my phone keeps correcting this to something strange, and it's, I feel like it's something that was said in the room or something like that. So you think penetrations on this guy's mind to the point where he was gonna write presentation and it went. Penetration, well, the algorithm knew that much. I really don't. Well, okay, I've so always I, kept mine off. As I type it, it's like if you. Okay, so presentation. Yeah. Does penetration come up as like the thing so that could it, very I well mean, be? It, could, it, it comes up as presentation, but if you accidentally hit. Let's, I'm trying to see the P R E. Type, yeah, like yeah. Uh, if you type in presentation without the R, I, don't I bet know. it would come well, up. Also, like to do penet penetration. Presentation yeah, is yeah. going to be penetration. Yeah, probably. yeah. Uh, but I'm also looking at it as like if you go E N T is right there, right? So Do you think this is what they did in the courtroom too? Like the forensics people were like, "Well, let's," uh, you know, in the jury, like when they're deliberating, they're yeah, like yeah, yeah, they're yeah. testing it on all their phones. They're like, yeah, "Oh, yeah, I yeah. could see how it happens." Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Because <laughs> if, if, if he, because he's trying to spell P R E N, right? Present P R E S. Yeah, P P R E S. Sorry, I fucking can't spell. Yeah. See, the, I I got fucking sued immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't like he was like ready for this giant dick to enter your pussy. I meant presentation. Yeah, were they talking about a presentation? Like was yeah. a presentation coming? <laughs> yeah. Farouk responded in an apparently flirtatious manner saying as part of a longer message, penetration LOL, what do you got on your mind? The exchange continued according to the employment tri tribunal with both the claimant and Fairbank making references to what might be on Fairbank's mind. So then it became flirtatious. I, I would see that, too. I'd write, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I meant presentation. And then if she was coming back, like, with winky faces and shit, like, yeah, I would have been, like, 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 uh, been like, oh, let's talk more about the tunnels and yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, the rail, <laughs> the, the railroad. Yeah. I will say that in the article. Oh, my God. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> sorry Frank. about that. <laughs> scared Frank. Cursed I was it. just going to say that in the article, it does say that Fairbank was referring to a meeting the following day. So, yeah, that was natural. But, like, the, the flirt flirting still occurred after the fact but also like i don't know if that's flirting because like I, it does feel like that could just be her trying to like dis dis not dismantle but like dis uh like lower the stakes of like this awkward thing that just happened you know what i mean like oh what's on your mind that seems less flirty and more like like oh, oh like you know trying to make a joke and like make it less uncomfortable sure no yeah that's true too i mean who knows uh fairbank also later wrote 
Best off you didn't come to work, to be fair. I couldn't be able to concentrate. Penetration. Spell checker set me up there. Uh, so that's weird. That I think he's like going like, wait a minute, I, do I have a shot with this chick now I, that I wrote penetration? She seems into it. I almost spit all of my LaCroix uh, on you. When, Why? When you were just like, when he responds, you didn't come to work. Like if he spelled come, C-U-M. C-U-M. <laughs> I, my spell checker. At that point, turn it off, pal. Yeah. <laughs> By the end of May, the tribunal said texts between the coworkers objectively showed a mutual intensity and at times a flirtatious relationship. Some of the terms used in their messages included cheeky sod, this is British shit, uh, angel, hey there trouble, and hey lovely, along with various sexual innuendos. Now, is this just a work fling, a work flirt? Sure, that's what what I'm saying. So, like, when did it, it doesn't have any, oh no, or does it? I don't think I have... This is where it ends for me, I believe. Uh, I don't have, like, where it went awry. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, because if it's just... Tech, I mean, did he, like, grab her ass at work? At that point, it's like, I, hey, man, calm down. You know? Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, how did it escalate to the point where she was like, I'm suing him for sexual harassment? Like, where did, like, uh, the mutual flirtatiousness get to a point where it was like, we are not flirting. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. You know, it doesn't say that, unfortunately, but... Um, what a story. Spell check coming in for the win, though, on that one. Yeah, it sounds like he accidentally fucked it up, and then she was kind of like, huh? And it sounds like, like oh, the, shit. It sounded like the spell error, which I believe he made, ended up leading to some sort of like, Flirty. maybe I got a shot here. I've done that, too, where I've like accidentally sent a text to a wrong girl, and they've been like into it, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> a whole new world <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> oh my god this is uh something that i got sent a trillion times because it involves cockroaches mm-hmm. which is what we are all here on this program if you live in los angeles you got cockroaches you think so? I've never seen one in my apartment. Oh, I've seen them so in hotel lucky. rooms. I've seen them, and it's not like I keep the greatest apartment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but I've never seen them. My, uh, I'm gonna a, move, so I'll probably see them there. One of the first apartments we got was fucking terrible, and then the apartment we're at right now, one of the other apartments is like it's like there's still spots that are you're like, oh, okay, that place is getting tented, like you know. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah. They put the whole tent up and fumigate yeah, yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh shit. Well, what if I were to tell you uh, that a North Carolina company will pay you? to test its pest control method to have 100 cockroaches in your home. Mm. North Carolina Pest Control Company is offering homeowners $2,000 for it to release 100 cockroaches in their home in an effort to study a treatment method. As technology advances, we're always looking for the newest and greatest ways to get rid of pest cockroach specifically. Uh, the company added that it's looking to test out a specific pest control technique by releasing about 100 American cockroaches in five to seven homes. It wants to gauge how effective this treatment is. This is wild that it would just be like, here's 100 roaches. We're going to see how good we are at killing them. It'd be hilarious that they just sucked. And then he was like, sorry. Right. <laughs> Turns out it didn't work. And now you have 5,000 cockroaches in yeah. your home because it's actually made them hornier. And they yeah, yeah. Now, they, now they're just <laughs> fucking. <laughs> now they just, actually, they don't even eat. They just have an insatiable urge to reproduce. <laughs> you just walk in your living room, turn the lights on. They're just gang banging. Weird side effect we didn't see coming. <laughs> and it's, yeah, imagine even if it was like, in this sample size, five to seven homes, there's like four of the homes that worked, and then your home was the one where they're like, that one didn't work. It's like the placebo effect. <laughs> <You're> just, <laughs> like, oh yeah, now here's two grand. That's not a lot. Two grand is not a lot to have that many cockroaches just willy-nilly in your home. Uh, the application page will remain open through July 31st if anyone out there hey. wants to get on board out there in the Raleigh area. At which point uh, these employees will spend some time sorting through all the applications. The company stipulated that people interested in in applying must own the home or have written approval from the homeowner and not try any additional cockroach treatment during the study. So, like, you're just supposed to exist with these roaches in the house. Like, they could be landing on your face. They could be, like, crawling in your mouth and shit. Like, I don't understand who would want to do this. The experiment will last about a month. What is this we're pulling up here? Oh, is this outside our studio? I was just going to know. This is outside our studio some nights, and this is like 20 cockroaches, and oh that's already God. very uncomfortable. Yeah, and I mean, we're not getting $2,000 for uh, the study. I mean, let's bring them here if they're already outside, right? You ever see someone with like a pet cockroach? 
No. Well, I mean, I am a pet cockroach, essentially, but I mean, aside from that, I've never uh, seen they anyone. Have those, they have those like big, big, like big hard shell ones. Oh, that can fit in your hand yeah, 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 yeah. That's weird. Pets are, do you have like pets? I have three cats. Okay, well, that's not weird. I was going to say, I, I wouldn't know if you're like a spider guy or like a snake. I've had yeah. an iguana growing up. I had drug dealers that had lizards <laughs> and uh, spiders and shit like that, yeah. You ever have those? Like, that's more of like a East Coast thing, I think, where you like, you go into guy, buy weed from a guy, and he's got like a, a tiger an aquarium. No, it's not not anything cool like that. It's like it's my tarantula or my snake or whatever, and you're like, oh god, I just want to leave this room. He's got a samurai sword on the wall. Just an alligator. Yeah, that would be. I mean, an alligator would be cool. A lizard was always cool. They would be those big ones, like an iguana, like you said. There, someone had a big pig that was just in their apartment. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was actually kind of cool. People have weird pets sometimes. I saw a, a person who had a pet possum. Yeah, I've seen ferrets, possums. Uh, chinchillas are actually kind of cute. Yeah, that's cute. I mean, sure. But not a cockroach. And uh, I don't want 100 of them released into my home. You know, I'm trying to keep them out. Uh, I want to see what's going on with this, like, test, though. Like, how long would it take? The experiment will last about a month, and if the cockroaches are not gone by then, the company said it will use traditional cockroach treatment options at no cost to you. So I'm curious what they, how long they think they're going to last in there. American cockroaches are one of the most, or one of uh, the five most common cockroach species in the United States, which has 55 species of insects. That's right, we're inclusive. Mm-hmm. Roaches, we've got all kinds out there. Brown roaches, black roaches. Every kind of roach, girl roaches, boy roaches, they roaches, brown roaches, white roaches, Half red smoke roaches. roaches. Half smoke roaches. There are more than 4,000 different types of cockroaches in the world. Female American cockroaches lay eggs for 10 straight months after mating, and each month lay about 16 eggs. If only 25 of these roaches lay 16 eggs in your house during this experiment, that's 400 more. <laughs> so it will quadruple in size yeah. if they fuck during this experiment. And if I know anything about roaches, we be fucking. We be fucking. What up? Let's get to sports. As I miss it. Ba-dum, bum, <laughs> I missed it again. Beep, 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 beep. This one's long. Do we have the video of that uh, Rangers fan too, Kirsten? Can you pull that up uh, for after the after this one? Yeah, you mean this one? Uh, this one. Oh, the fight one. Yes. Yep. One second, I'll grab it for you. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, there was a, have you been following the NHL playoffs yeah. at all? Did you see what happened yeah. at Madison Square Garden? The guy got hit in the face. What a fucking punch this guy took. Yeah. Is he okay? He's okay. He but was he... okay that night. He was hospitalized. Yeah, yeah. It looked like I watched a snuff film. Yeah. I thought the man died. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, it was pretty rough. Here it is right here. It's a, uh, at Madison Square Garden, a lightning fan gloating. After the Rangers lost. Was he gloating? I thought he was just talking to... From what I read, he was just talking to someone else. Maybe. That's true. I mean, I mean, he was excited. Like, he, I, when I say gloating, I don't mean it in terms of, like, he was, like, making... He didn't do anything to deserve what happened no, no, to him, No, he was obviously. excited his team won. But, yeah, he was excited his team won. He was drunk as fuck, you can see. Yeah. And so, I mean, this is just an insane punch if you haven't seen it. This is, like... One of the gnarliest. Eight point one million views. You don't know what's up. We watched the man in the red. <laughs> now, what do you think hurt more? He was out before he hit the ground, yeah. but when he hit the ground, that thud was louder. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what made yeah. me go. He's dead. Yeah, yeah. Now, what's fucked up about this is everyone's like typical Rangers fan. Hilarious. But like, I mean, what about all the dozens of Rangers fans? Watch as you, as the video goes on. That man runs away, and about. You know, twelve people gather yeah, around yeah, yeah. Uh, the man that's to make just, sure he's okay. That's just a shitty person. I whenever exactly. I see stuff like this, I always think of like my dad because it's like <laughs> that could have been my dad. My dad could have punched that guy. Were you thinking? And so? No, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> my dad could have <laughs> easily been the guy that got punched. You know what I mean? Because my dad's like a he goes to the Giants game. He walks around the Bay Area with the fucking Dodgers shit, and he's just a fan of baseball. Sure, but some young kid or some fucking douchebag might just fucking yeah. You know, that's why he wasn't I, even looking. I mean, I wear Bill's stuff into enemy territory i wear saber stuff into enemy territory i and i do fear this though i mean like i don't i don't 
there's it's insane that that person that's like a serial killer though that's like a one percent person who's mm-hmm. so shitty that they do that and this guy by the way he ran and you know immediately security was called and they were looking for him another guy did they ever find him yes another guy followed him and also got punched out so he, he beat up two people so he has two pending assault charges uh, he's from Long or yeah, Long Island or Staten Island, one of those places. And you know he probably goes to bars. He's got two assaults, baby. Yeah, right. Rangers. But he was identified immediately and arrested, like right at the arena. Oh, so okay. they did catch him. But what a fucking! Pu- I mean, I thought that guy was dead. I watched that punch about a thousand times. It's nuts. Do you think? Do you think uh, he's like known now in New York? Like people are just like this fucking asshole. I don't know. I mean, I'd love to hear if anyone out there knows anything about this guy. I'd love to hear if it's like. He's actually a good guy. Like, if the I want to see if people are like taking up arms for him, or if they're like, uh, no, he's a scumbag and he doesn't represent us. And Rangers fans are definitely trying to distance themselves from him. But it's also they go, you know, like where everyone around the country is going, like typical Rangers fan. All the Rangers fans are like, he's from Long Island. Yeah, <laughs> he's not even really one of us. No, one should of be us. an Islanders fan. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that was wild. And then there was also something that was a little less violent, but I don't know. It's I found this interesting. On a broadcast, they like to do this. They like to find couples. We've been finding and categorizing uh, or cataloging, excuse me, these different instances where the broadcast finds a couple and then they try to f- decipher what's going on in the argument. And this one I feel like they're describing mansplaining. Uh, he's telling her how he used to do it. Yeah, I remember when I, when I was in high school, I threw that nasty curveball. <laughs> Should have seen him. Had big rotation on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll show you pictures when we get back home. Got some video, too. It's black and white, but it's going to be great. You know what I mean? She's not buying it either, right. is she? No. Please stop talking. You know what? Please please stop talking. <laughs> really? Yeah, I mean, I was great. You should have said, I could have gone pro, but... I uh, had, a, had a, an argument with a coach, and we didn't quite see eye to eye. And a trick elbow got me. He didn't like that I wore my hat backwards. <laughs> it's weird how he, like, almost, like, is lip syncing. He's, like, doing the words, and he's, like, the the it guy's was, lips are moving, and I'm, like, is he really saying that it's shit? So, he's, like, it's because I wore my hat backwards, and somebody's got a backwards hat and shit. Yeah, right? It's tremendous. And meanwhile, that guy could be super sweet, and he's, like, describing, like, he's, like, and then my child took their first steps, and then they tumbled you know, he's doing all these different things. He's talking about, like, this sweet moment in his life, and they're all like, look at this fucking douchebag over here. As I was saving drowning children from the Pacific Ocean, <laughs> yeah, their yeah, hands yeah. grabbed my hands, and I was able to grab them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's describing, like, how he, he like, uh, saved the whales, or, like, he took, like, uh, seals, and, like, I was taking the oil out of their eyes after the <laughs> the ship spilled all the oil into the water, but they're like, here's some douchebag over here. <laughs> when you save a choking baby, you need to fucking pull the airway and make sure it's clear. <laughs> this guy over here is telling this lady about how a uh, curveball works, <laughs> and she's not buying it either. But yeah, that was I thought that was funny. I mean, they were like, Going there was a in. moment there where I thought like, I'm like, wow, is he like reading his lips? This is crazy. But Frank... I love you so much. I appreciate you this coming on great. the program. Thank you. I, I, and you came in on Father's Day of all days, and uh, God bless you for that. And uh, tell everyone where they can go see you again. Uh, Frank Castillo on Instagram, and then I have a podcast uh, called Peaked. Uh, you can find me on Peak TV on Instagram. We uh, cover a lot of marijuana news and rosins, and we just, you know, have a good old sesh. I had a fun time on there, too, and uh, go check blessed. out our, uh, my episode with you on that. Um, what about the gigs, too? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to be... July 7th through the 17th, opening up with Polly Shore in North and South Carolina. Um, next Saturday, I will be in Bakersfield opening up for Doug Benson. And then, uh, yeah, I will be headlining in Houston, Texas, September 17th or 16th and 17th. Awesome. And if you want to come out, the Roach back on the road starting in July, July 16th, going to be at the brand new Mike Drop Comedy Club in San Diego. Ooh. I'm excited to do that. Two shows. Get your tickets at Josh underscore Potter on Instagram, at J underscore Potter on Twitter, uh, uh, twitch.tv slash Josh underscore Potter if you want to uh, come and check that out. I've been streaming a bunch here and there. And uh, as always, thank you so much for rating, reviewing on iTunes and things like that. And thank you for subscribing on YouTube as well. And keep it coming, friends. If you haven't done any of those things, be a part of it. And we will see you next Tuesday on The Josh Potter Show.
keep the queefs coming. Josh Potter Show. You've got to learn to be able to put the ball in your hands. Your hands are what makes it possible. Q-U-E-E-F. Murder. Sex murder. Yeah. Your hands are, are, are tender and they can move and caress the ball. <laughs> that's that's kind of that's gay, but hey, close.